The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 10th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a sea of green out there. You've got all the sectors with inside the S&P 500 trading to the upside. You've got all the U.S. indices that we track trading to the upside. About seven tenths for the Dow, 220 points. <clears throat> Nine tenths for the S&P, 39 points. A little over one percent for the Nasdaq 100, 152 there. Russell's up one and six tenths percent or 28. The semis are up one and seven tenths percent. That's a 58 point move there. 207 for the trannies. Gold is up six dollars. Silver's up seven pennies. Natural gas is, no, nah, it's up just a smidgen. Lights recruit is off 80 cents, 30 year treasury. Printing down eight ticks, six ticks at 111.27. Now, leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, we've got Mercado Lire, about a two and seven tenth percent move, 33 bucks. Super Micro, 25 bucks, nine percent. Monolithic Power, a little over three percent or 15 bucks over two percent for asthma holdings or broadcom one and a half percent move that's about 13 buckaroonies to the downside it's a carol therapeutics off 67 percent 32 dollar move ventex bioscience is off about 27 percent nearly eight dollars granger worldwide off seven bucks about one percent 89 bio down 37 percent that's about six dollars northrop bremen giving back five bucks today that's a one percent move to the downside so where do we begin i tell you where we begin let's go take a look at where are we at market breadth out here as we take a look at analyze the market if we take a look Look at the uh, S&P 500, 30 minute chart, bullish, 207, 205 above, 97 below profile. Above profile in the NASDAQ 100 is 40 below 14. 30 minute uh, time frame, it is bullish with regard to a market breast standpoint. If we take a look at what's going on, the other four time frames, that'd be the 60, the 240 daily and weekly. Let's get over to that, that dashboard. And here we're going to see the S&P 500 bullish for the 60 bullish for the 240 and on the daily it's close it's 126 above 142 below let's take a look at the nasdaq 100 nasdaq 100 bullish 60 bullish 240 bullish daily weekly is very close to a turnover 24 above 27 below so you'd have to say market conditions overall are pretty bullish out there at least with the nasdaq the s p 500 is getting pretty close out there so that's helpful to understand what else do we want to know well if we take a look at that new york stock exchange that advanced client oscillator we've gone from that oversold reading now we are above the uh, plus uh, zero threshold level and maybe we're going to go target the overbought reading 
That's right. You get to oversold, you get down to minus 150, you get overbought when you get to the plus 150 level out there, 150 area out there. Right now, we're printing out at 108.13. So something we'll want to keep an eye on out there. Markets behave the same way to the upside and to the downside. It's a cool tool out there. Glad that you and I are using it. If we take a look at where's price trading in relationship to the perigee pivot point, well, inside the ES mini, it's above it. Inside the NQ, it's above it. Goldilocks needs to get to 1893.80. And uh, Light Sweet Crude, it's pivot point is 94.43. When you're trading above it, at least short term time frame, it tells you to be long. When you are below it, it tells you to be short, or at least looking for topping patterns on the short side out there. What else can we share with you? Really not much else. That spot volatility, we talked about that during the uh, 11 a.m. update. The key level here to be watching today, you're looking at the left-hand panel chart, is going to be 1608. That's very likely where price is going to target. That's the spot volatility that is. And the question is, does it find support there? If it finds support there, that kind of keeps the market on edge. If it can close below it, it certainly closed below for two consecutive sessions, says that we are in rally mode. Now, with regard to that rally mode out there, you've got to pay attention to the fact that the ES Mini at the same time, spot volatility is getting down towards the 50-day. On a daily basis, the ES Mini is getting up towards the top of its where the sellers are located. Not that much higher today. So high so far 44.950 where's resistance is at 44.16.50 out there so we're really close if we take a look at the nasdaq 100 it's entered the sell zone the sell zone is an area because it's a bearish structured profile that's 15.298 to 15.509 in the case of the dow equity future contract now the dow and the russell both have by the d point patterns i overlooked the fact that they formed a four bar um, uh, three river, four bar river uh, morning star pattern out there. So every one of the daily time frames have buy uh, patterns out there. TD9s are buy the D point patterns. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, price likely targeting the top of its profile. It's at 34,166. In the Russell, it's 18,2480. If price begins closing above those levels, well, then we're headed back to other prices. Other prices being where, Steve-O? Excellent question. Let's go take a look at those areas. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but here's what you could plan for. Here's what you'd be looking for. If you look at the ES Mini, it closes above that 4460 level will bring 44 45 66 a new play that's um, a courtesy of its TD nine count bottom pattern out there in the case of the NQ its price target if we can get above 15 509 would be 15 7 19 75 its TD nine count breakdown level in the case of the Dow equity future contract to close above the 34 167 area is going to get us up to 35 357 in the Russell 2000 any close of 18 24 80 should get to the 18 92 70 so that's the overview for the daily time frame exactly what price is trading into where the potholes are at we're basically getting into that zone as we speak right now let's go oh shoot I didn't did I switch panels I did switch panels okay good at least I did that now let's take a look at maybe intraday out here and we've got Goldilocks that showed up first. That's okay. Let's go take a look at the ES Mini because the ES Mini is the one that is approaching the resistance level first, that being the top of its daily profile. When price starts approaching either support or resistance level, in this case here, we're looking at resistance. We are looking for, we are looking for um, short-term tops to show up on our intraday chart. So we're waiting for this to populate. We'll immediately look at the three-hour chart, or the five-hour chart that is 300 minutes. Um, as soon as this thing here populates. Come on, come on, baby. There we go. It's taking its time. I guess I've got just too much open up out here. Um, open up out here. That's beautiful. So now we take a look at the five hour chart. We don't have any kind of a topping signal price above profile. That suggests you move up to that 4416 level. 240 minute chart, no topping signal. Suggests moving up to 4416. Two hour chart. You had a TD9 count top. You. You do have wave number seven that's in place out here. We'll finish taking a look at the intraday charts for the ES Mini as soon as we come back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstad breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, looks like we're going to get a chance to see how those sellers, uh, what the strength of those sellers are in the ES Mini up at that 44, 16, 50 level. That is the top of that daily profile. We've got the uh, two-hour chart. We've got many of the intraday charts up on my screen out here. We are in wave number seven inside the two-hour chart, but the current bar that we're in doesn't close till noon is my recollection. Let me make sure. Yeah, that is noon. It says you couldn't get a confirmed wave seven top until 2 p.m. You've got to have a lower high out there. But you do have a negated TD night count pattern. That is for sure, and that suggests higher price. Uh, on a 60-minute uh, basis, no topping signal. We know that that's also bullish from a market press standpoint. The same thing from a 30-minute chart inside the ES Mini. Now, there are A to B equals CD patterns that are present. So let's just take a quick peek at that. We're beyond, I believe we're beyond the one-to-one, -one, but let's just make sure of that. So I'm just going to move this over, the A to B line, over to the C point out there. Give me a moment. We'll try to pull that over. So, uh, no, okay, we're not up to, the, uh, to that completion. So we're getting very close which looks like it takes us about 44.16 as well. Now, just because you complete a one-to-one -one move does not mean sell that. Now, you've got odds are favoring um, that this would be a, a time to consider selling, but you really want to see at least some type of bearish action, at least on an intraday chart. I mean, at a minimum, you want to start seeing on a 10-minute chart price closing below the bottom of a prior candle out there. We do have a uh, TD9 count pattern on a 10-minute base that's going to complete in one minute out here at 11.20. So at least on the 10-minute basis, let's watch. On the 15-minute uh, basis, it's in the process of negating a TD9 count bottom. That would happen at 11.30 if, in fact, it closes above um, 44.09.50 out there. So the only topping signals per se out here, the 30 minutes got a wave 7 pattern, just needs a... Um, a lower high to con uh, to firm to, to con a lower high in order to confirm that pattern, 
Um, so it's got potential. We're approaching. We are approaching the. Uh, we're approaching the uh, zone out here where you should start to see the ES mini start to pull back. Now I'm going to put up my five minute time frame chart. So we're really getting pretty granular here. And on a five minute basis, these patterns work the same way. Uh, what we have here is also a wave seven. Uh, that just simply needs a lower high in this next five minute session. So this one just uh, completed out here. Let me just update this. It's got a Rhodes momentum indicator sit. No, it doesn't have that. It's just got a wave seven top. Now, the key area here on a five minute basis, if we are going to see any kind of a, a turn and churn and burn, you'd have to see it close at least below that oscillator and change line. That is currently printed at 4406. It's going to go up and down by a tad out here, but we are at that point where we should begin to at least see some kind of a pullback or retracement here based upon the ES mini getting up into that uh, resistance zone, the top of its daily profile. So we'll check back in later on in the uh, show. Why don't we spend some time and take a look at the requests that have come in? I believe we've got five of them, so at least let's get to those. The first one coming in this morning from uh, Vic, and I uh, want to take a look at NVIDIA, and the question is, is NVIDIA did it form an A to B equals CD pattern? So I've got the A to B equals CD pattern drawn in here. The swing point that you would be using was from October 2nd. The volume on that was 43.3 million shares. This pattern, uh, that swing point was crossed a couple of days ago with 43.4 million shares. 43.4 versus 43.3. So I guess in one shape, way or form out there, it is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. However, this is a big however, if we take a look at NVIDIA, today is going to complete its TD9 count topping pattern. It's going to occur on the bar following bar number nine. That says pay close attention to tomorrow's action out there. If price closes above today's high, whatever that is, that is a strong upward momentum move. And then that A to B equals CD pattern that you had referenced should complete. Now, I'm not saying that's just going to only complete at the one to one. In fact, I would say it likely heads higher than that because that retracement, that B to C retracement, although I don't have that measured here, that is certainly less than a point, uh, point 0.618. In fact, it's a 45% retracement. I just looked at another screen of mine. That typically would lead to a more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Now, in the case of NVIDIA, this could be setting up. If it's because of the A to B equals CD pattern, if it goes on to complete that, gets up towards that 470, 441 level, and then we generate a bearish reversal candle, that would be a Gartley sell pattern inside of NVIDIA. And on a weekly basis, you've still got a road momentum indicator top price just simply consolidating with inside its profile completing that one to one still keeps it basically with inside that profile or very close to it out here you've got a t9 count top uh and road momentum indicator top on the monthly time frame so nvidia just suggests that we should be careful out here and i would watch really tomorrow's action out there inside of nvidia so i hope that that helps you out vic with regard to both the a to b equal cd pattern and the other patterns that are important to be observing and watching here with regard to nvidia coda inside the tiger said wants to take a look at ticker symbol tpl so tpl trading right now at about 1852 dollars his question is is it time to add based upon the weekly chart out here so here's the thing that I, I'm taking a look at with regard to TPL. The first thing is prices uh, had this swing point out here, Code, I'm, and I'm sure you're aware of that, that swing point from 911. The swing point from 911 did volume of 33,000 shares. When that was tested, and it was tested out here on the trading day of October 2nd, it was with 36 thousand shares that was 36,000 shares going against 33,000 shares so typically when you test a swing point with more volume price will get back there and test that low hasn't done that if and right now price is still trading with inside that uh, swing point out here um, and that swing point high is going to be 1854.14 we're trading at 1852.63 out here. So I would say that price has to close above that swing point to get us into some kind of bullish uh, mode out here, or at least that it's rejecting that uh, swing point area. So we're still trading inside there, and it just becomes a bit complicated. Now, price yesterday tested and rejected the top of its daily profile. That's at 1834.55. A close above that would be nice. However, you're still dealing with that swing point high, and that's what I would first be watching out there. If price can close above it, then we're above resistance levels. And what it tells us is the price should at least get back to test its prior swing high from uh, the trading day of September 27th. And that would be between 1914 and 1858.57 out there. 
If I look at the weekly time frame chart, there was no topping pattern that I could see. All we saw was price pulling back and testing its oscillator and change line that had changed from red to green. That is a bullish signal out there. Now, just because it's bullish doesn't mean there's a, not any battles. There is a battle here, Coda, and that next battle on the weekly chart is up at 1960. But if you're asking me, did last week give you the signal on the weekly chart to add to the weekly? Um, uh, you know, from a uh, ad shares from a weekly standpoint, the answer would have to be yes. It would have to be absolutely positively yes. So you got those battles that we have identified based upon swing points um, out there. And on the uh, monthly chart, the last thing that I can leave you with with regard to Texas Pacific Land Corporation, it has resistance at 1962.82. If price can close above that, you're likely off to the races. Those races being the TD9 count top on the monthly time frame. From the back uh, from the month of November of 2022, and that would be in the range of 2274 all the way up to 2739. So, Coda, I hope that helped you out with regard to TPL. Thanks so much for taking the time to put in the request. We're going to switch over to the charts for Intel, but we're not going to review those charts till we get back. This is from Nitram inside the Tiger's Den. Nitran. You can get a TD9 count top today inside of Intel today or tomorrow. All price needs to do today or tomorrow. Well, actually, we'll come back because I do see something else I need to share with you about that TD9 count pattern. So we'll take a look at that as soon as we get back from this break. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't 
forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, charts here for uh, Intel INTC is the uh, ticker symbol out here. Now, this will form bar number nine of a TD9 count as long as price closes above 35.93 today. Um, and, and right now we're in that uh, mode. Now, even though it will form bar number nine if it closes above that, it still has to spike above. That would be today or tomorrow. 36.54. The high of the day so far has been 30. Oh, it did it. 36.55. So uh, all that you're now looking for, you'd have a TD9 count top out here at Nitram uh, that will complete tomorrow. So it's going to form today as long as you get a close above 35.93. That pattern will complete tomorrow. That suggests that you could have a, a TD9 count top that will pull back and at least test that oscillator and change line. Now, if you close above this 36.54 level, and you do it with more than 45 million shares, what you would get is an A to B equals C to the upside, a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. So far, the first two hours of trading or so, you've done about eight and a half million shares. So eight and a half million shares, that swing point had volume, if I didn't tell you, 45 million shares. Eight and a half says you're coming in pretty light out there. Um, you know, maybe that's 25 million shares to 30 million shares at day's end. Uh, if this volume pays for it to keep up. So I'd watch that TD9 count bottom. Why? Or TD9 count top. Because if you take a look at the bottom, that was a TD9 count bottom that had formed out there as well. So when you get those topping patterns out there, what price should at least do is pull back that oscillator and change line. If you can test reject it because it's green, that would be a bullish uh, outcome out there. What else can I take a look at on the weekly, on the in, for Intel out here? Well, I can look at the 30 minute time frame chart. The 30-minute time frame chart says pay attention to it. Why? Because this is going to form a TD9 count top at uh, 12 noon. It will complete that pattern at 12.30. And that says that by 12.30, we ought to see Intel begin to pull back. Now, the first level of support for Intel on that pullback would be about 36.46, below that 36.27, below that 36.08, and below that 35.64 out there. So Intel says caution. Will Robinson, because it could form a TD9 count top today and complete that pattern tomorrow. So, Nitram, I hope that that helps you out with regard to the analysis for um, Intel. Let's move on to the next request. This comes in from Hector and Patty. They want to take a look at ticker symbol IWO. And the question is, they're concerned about the light volume coming off of the uh, bottom out there. So, we take a look at that. I say the other thing to be concerned about out here first is first okay we can take a look at volume i think you've got that kind of nailed out here but price is also running right into potential resistance so that is the top of its daily profile the top of that daily profile hector and patty is 225.22 we're trading right now at 225.12 out here so 225.22 if price can close above that well then it's going to be closing inside a swing point from the trading day of september 29th that swing had 715,000 shares. You've done 180 today. So let's just pick 200,000 times three. That gives us 600. So you're moving to that swing point with light volume. Nonetheless, if you close inside there, and close inside there requires a close above 223.62. Even if, with, if it's with light volume, maybe you're going to test the top. If it's with volume, you're more likely to go test that top. But nonetheless, on a daily time frame uh, out here, and you do have a Four River Morning Star that uh, confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern out there. Um, and if price can close above that uh, TAS market profile top at 225.22, well, then it may be setting its sights at 234.68, the daily TD9 count breakdown level. Now, what you also like about the iShares uh, 2000 growth ETF for the Russell 2000 is on a weekly basis, it's going to complete that TD9 count bottom pattern today. And it did it where? It did it at TD9 count breakout support. When this top, by the way, on a weekly basis, was TD9 count top seems likely that it's important to be paying attention to this pattern, which I teach to you for free. You just have to subscribe, Mastering Probability, or certainly listen to all these radio shows that we uh, do out here. On a weekly or monthly time frame chart, you just got a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside its profile. So Hector and Patty, should you worry about the light volume? 
I wouldn't worry about it at this stage here. Instead, you've got to worry about the sellers up at that 225.22 level out there. But again, if you can clear that, then you're likely headed to 234.68. So as always, thank you so much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. Let's go to our next request out here. This is from uh, Rose Casanova. Wants to take a look at first solar out here. FSLR is the uh, ticker symbol. FSLR right now trading out at about 151.44 and above its red oscillator and change line. That's something we haven't seen since the trading day of uh, September the 8th out there. So that's a beautiful thing. Now, there is a new profile that is formed. The top of that profile, it's hard to make out. It's at 154.09. So it's right behind that letter A. So very likely that is where First Solar is going to test its next level of sellers or resistance, 154.09. Rose, write that down in your pad of paper. If price can close above that, then the daily time frame will be telling you that you've got a change in trend. Is that a possibility, Stevie? And the answer to that question is yes. Why is that yes? Because you're going to get a TD9 count bottom pattern, or it sure looks like you're going to get a TD9 count bottom pattern on Friday. Now, the pattern won't complete until next week, so you could get a lower low, but you do have a TD9 count bottom pattern that is going to form out here. And if, in fact, in the daily time frame, price can close above 154.09, then First Solar is on to something. And on to something would be targeting the 173.65 to 178.82 level out there. So so we like what we see with regard to first solar on a 30 minute basis. Let's pull those charts over here. What do we need to see on a 30 minute basis to tell us that maybe first solar is out of the woods? Well, you know what I would say? I would say that first thing that it needs to close above is 152.50. So far, the high of the day has been 152.41. One fifty two fifty, a price can close above that. That's a TD nine count breakdown level on a thirty minute time frame chart. Close above that based upon what we just looked at on the daily and the weekly time frame chart, that would really be giving us a signal that you may have that change in trend here nailed with regard to first solar uh, Casanova. So watch 152.50. That's really the next area to be watching, observing out there. I hope that helps you out with regard to First Solar. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Let's go to our next request out here. The next request just came in, so we can do that on this chart here. And that is for ticker symbol PSTG. Let's go see what PSTG is as it populates and what it's trading at. And the question is... From Duncan Steve, can you look at PSTG? Took a bump up in April from the 26s to the 36s. Pure storage, okay, is the name. The IT pioneer delivers world most advanced data storage technology and services. It may do that, but the question is, what are what do shareholders think about that? That's what we're going to go read out here. So right now, we can see that price is dealing with a prior swing point. It was a uh, bearish shooting star candle, and that resistance level you'd like to see price close above today is up at the 36 36. 22 area, 36.22 year, 36.20 uh, as we speak right now. I know it shows 26 on my white background screen. The black background screen is more accurate. So you're up at a resistance level. Now, the volume on that swing point was 2.4 million shares. Today, you're up with 1 million shares. So you've got volume pushing into it. Even if price closes back below 36.22 odds favor, you're going to at least test that level. And if you can close above it, well, then you've got a small A to B equals CD to the upside out there. Small because that retracement almost looks like it was more than a 7.786 retracement out there. But we'll finish taking a look at um, Pure Storage Inc. as soon as we get back from this break. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for PSTG. This is Pure Store Jank. This is for Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. So a couple different things. One, that retracement. I checked that retracement uh, for you, Duncan, uh, during the break. It was 81.17% retracement, so more than 0.786. So not really an A to B equals CD pattern. In fact, what could take place today, if price, in fact, closes below a 3622 uh, level it could be setting up just a very simple uh, sideways consolidation pattern that consolidation pattern could look like this we don't want to we can't make that call until we really see what today's close is but it could in fact look you know something like uh, this out there so you could be in a consolidating pattern uh, or if price is able to take out that swing point Again, that's that shooting star candle. Then what we would do is we'd go over and take a look at the weekly chart. And we'd say, okay, the next battle then to the upside out here should come at about the 3703 level. At 3703 to 3733. And if price can overcome that 3733 mark, that's the weekly oscillator and change line, which is green. That would say that this is going to make its way up to 3865. Now, we like the price action on the weekly chart. Why? Because you had a wave seven, roads went to indicator top. That simply led to a consolidation with inside that profile level. That profile level running from 3488 up to 3865. We like the monthly chart. The monthly chart has a roads momentum indicator top, but prices found support at the green oscillator and change line. That says its conditions are bullish to neutral. We'll go with neutral since it's got a top. We're really kind of neutral on the weekly chart, but we're not bearish. That's the important thing out here. So again, on the daily time frame, we need to see today's action to be able to make that next judgment call. But you, um, and we know that you're going to that swing point, 
you know, with some uh, pretty decent volume. Again, it's 2.4 million on that uh, swing point of that shooting star, and you're already at 1 million today. So you're going to be up and test that shooting star uh, pattern out there. I wouldn't call it a consolidation pattern if price closes above the top of that shooting star candle. So, Duncan, Steve, I hope that, that helped you out with regard to PSTG. Thanks much for taking the time to write in. Let's take a look at our last request that we have so far out here, and that's coming in from G Motion. G Motion wants to take a look at Apple. So, as we take a look, Oops, got to put up the actual Apple charts. As we take a look at Apple, what do we know? We know that today will become bar number seven of a TD9 count. That says that Apple could form a top, short term or otherwise, it could form a top between tomorrow, Wednesday, and Friday of this week. The top has to form on bars eight, nine, or the bar following bar number nine out there. So we've got that in play inside of Apple. On a weekly basis, what do we have? Well, on a weekly basis, Apple confirmed a TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum indicator top. That took price right back to its breakout level. Coming back to a breakout level can be a buy area. And that was at 170.42. It turns out that, in fact, that was the case. Now, in the case of Apple, it is trading above. It closed above the center of its bullish structured profile last week. And when you close above the center of a bullish structured profile, odds favor that buyers are going to be able to push price up to uh, the top of that profile. That's at 183.27. We can see the green oscillator and change line is just slightly above that. So I would say at this stage here, with being in bar seven out here, G Motion, odds favor Apple is going to go ahead and make that move up towards that 183.27 level. Is there anything getting in the way of that? Well, let's take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart as a potential example. And on a 30 minute basis, what do we have? We've got a negated TD9 count topping pattern. But what we still have that's triggered is a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. That requires a bearish reversal candle. If you were to get a bearish reversal candle, G-Motion, then on a very short-term basis, meaning a 30-minute chart, you would have a short-term top. And then what we would see is price pull back and test support. Support levels right now in Apple on a 30-minute basis are at 179.16, 178.64, 178.30 and the final level of support, key area of support, would be 176.87 out there. So that's what we see when we take a look at Apple. All the charts right now are suggesting that it continues to move higher. Watch that 30-minute chart, though. That move higher should take us up towards that 183.27 mark. So I hope that provided you with what you were looking for, G Motion. And thank you so much for taking the time to write in. Um, okay, bears at Steve's 4416. Missed it by one tick out there. Well, we got to give it a little bit of room out there, Peter. So let's go back. What Peter's talking about is the uh, is basically. Let me see this set of charts out here. Well, let's put up this one. Got the daily and the weekly. What uh, Peter's referring to is that upper left hand chart out there with price getting up to that 44.16.50 level. It got up to 44.16.25. He's correct. It missed it by one tick. So you're up at resistance out there on the daily time frame. Now, let's not forget that the ES Mini last week also confirmed a Gartley buy pattern for its weekly time frame. And that's big. Now, the weekly resistance level right now from uh, on the ES Mini is up at the bottom. It's up at the bottom. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it is what it is. It's at the bottom of the profile. That's at 44.24. So even if price spikes above this 44.16.50 level, the area to be watching is going to be 44.24. If price can close above 44.24.25, price will have gotten back inside its weekly profile. And that would then suggest to run up to 44.88. We can see here in the NQ, Price has not made its way up to the top of its profile. That's at 15.509. And above 15.509 is its TD Nankow breakdown level. That's at 15.719 out there. So thanks for uh, noticing that, uh, Peter, that uh, price has gotten up there. Again, we have to go back to those intraday charts out here. Let's see if I still have those up on my screen. Was this for the ES? Yeah, we do out here. So on the ES, we had a TD Nankow top that is about to fail potentially here and as we get to the 1150 you got a minute and a one minute and 30 seconds out here your price closes above on a 10 minute basis 44 13 25 it'll negate that signal and suggest that we move higher the 15 minute chart negated its td9 count top there's no other topping patterns other than this two hour wave number wave seven letter g but again that cannot get confirmed until 2 p.m out there so it's up to the 10-minute chart. Watch that. If we get that close above that, then likely 
price makes its way through 44.16 and then makes its way up to that 44.24 level, and that would be the bottom of that weekly profile. That Apple commentary helped me too, Steve. Oh, good. Get two birdies with one stone. That's a beautiful thing out there. Um, that's a wonderful thing. Okay. What you've been waiting. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. So I don't have anything, any other requests that I see. Let me just check my phone real quick, see if there's any other emails that have come in since we've got just a, a few minutes out here before we end the show. And the answer is no, I don't see anything. So what do we want to do next? What do we want to do next? Let me take a look at this market day chart out here. <sighs> what do we want to do? Let's go take a look at high ho silver because silver is up at resistance. Uh, silver, December contract. Let's look. At, oh, my goodness. What am I doing here? Oh, yeah, I'm in the right spot. I'm in the right spot. Sorry about that. So let's take a look at silver. You're going to get the uh, bottom right hand chart. You're going to get a 10 minute chart. Uh, out here, but you can see on the daily time frame, silver's up a resistance, right? When we get to resistance levels, you look to see what short term topping signals might be in place out here. So we're just simply waiting for these charts to populate. So far, I just see profile levels like on that 10 minute chart at 2201. So I'm not seeing a whole lot, but we're about to go to break in about the next uh, three minutes out, three minutes, three seconds or so out here. We'll hear that music playing along. I got a TD nine count top on the uh, two hour time frame chart out here. So the key level that silver needs to close above on a two hour basis is gonna be 2218. If it can do that, then you're off to the race. I see a five hour TD nine count. No, well, I'll be back and we'll take a look at silver. We'll finish off, take a look at silver as soon as we get back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. I'd love to share with you some nice bite-sized morsels with regard to silver. Can't, uh, can't. The only thing I can really provide you is I see a lot of sideways action. As Tom would say, it's uh, maybe uh, trading sideways to build cause to bust out to the upside out there. And that's what I would go with as we speak right now. But again, a confirmation would be a two-hour close above 22.18 out there. I see a lot of resistance where we're trading. That's at the top of the profile, 22.03 as well. But the U.S. dollar index is beginning to move just a tad lower out there. So that should help out silver. So it looks like just simply a sideways move getting ready to bust out the highs. Two requests that have come in, one from Dan. And let's take a look at Nike out here. Oh, uh, that's not Nike. Thought I put that chart up here. Let's take a look at this chart. That's not it. All right, one of the third time is the charm out there, and there's the Nike chart. So we take a look at Nike out here. Dan, if price is able to uh, uh, take out tomorrow or the next day, spike above 99.47, then Nike will generate a TD nine count top. You're at bar number eight today, but price needs to at least close in 80%, 90% of the time when you get a, 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 TD, a bar number eight, and it is the high in this case of the pattern, it'll complete that pattern. We don't have that right yet. But if in fact we did get a, a spike above today, 99.47, then, in fact, that could set up a TD nine count top. Likely, price is going to move higher. Why? Right now, you've got uh, price trained above its weekly oscillator and change line. It suggests it wants to go target 100.49. The daily TD nine count breakdown level 101.96. Monthly chart, nothing out there to help us with. So I'd watch that over the next couple of days out here. And lastly, for Nancy, if you want to take a look at Microsoft, what can we find out here quickly? Microsoft should go target. It's recent highs out there. I'd say right around the 337.40 would be its target area. Today's bar number seven here. You could get a TD9 count top. That would be between tomorrow, Wednesday, and Friday. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Be safe out there. Take care.